Hello everyone, my name is Sakshi and in today's session we would be discussing about what exactly euthanasia is and the concept of living will in India. So let's go ahead. The first question to answer or basically to understand is what is euthanasia? Now euthanasia, if I say Hindi, then it's a situation where a person is going ahead and ending his or her life either voluntarily or involuntarily. Now the point is ki why involuntarily or voluntarily and how does that matter? So euthanasia, to, to understand euthanasia, you need to understand why do one person reaches to this point where we have to take a call whether we should be ending his or her life or not. So basically euthanasia is a situation where uh, a person has uh, reached uh, medically to an extent where his or her body has become vegetative in nature. Vegetative simply means that the person is alive but none of the bodily functions are functioning in a normal general manner. So, if we Hindi, then there is a situation where a person is in a lash. Ki hai. Now, coming to the point that if somebody is in a situation which is vegetative in nature, where your life is not living or not living is almost the same hai, and the kind of pain that a person is going through is enormous that you and I or anybody who is generally well will not be even able to understand. So, euthanasia is not a new concept. Euthanasia is not something that was introduced only in India. There are a lot many countries around the world who allow euthanasia where they let people choose whether they want to end their sufferings or not in case they are, they are in a situation where their normal life cannot be resumed back again. Now, to understand euthanasia in a much proper manner, there are two different terms that you need to understand. One is passive euthanasia and one is active euthanasia. What is active euthanasia? Active euthanasia is simply means that in a situation where a person uh, wants to end his or her suffering or where a person wants to end his or her life, due to certain medical condition, due to being in vegetative state. In that case, active euthanasia may be a lethal injection or certain act will be done by the medical practitioner to end the suffering. But when it comes to passive euthanasia, it's not the same. In passive euthanasia, you do not inject an injection, you do not give certain medicine to lower down the heartbeat, to let the person rest in peace. In fact, for passive euthanasia, all you do is remove the life support system and let person die naturally. So active euthanasia and passive euthanasia are two different practices. Again, there is something called voluntary and involuntary. What is voluntary and involuntary? Voluntary is basically a situation where a person, though in a very difficult medical condition, yet has certain senses to decide whether he or she wants to end her life or not. Involuntary is a situation where a person is not even in a position to decide for himself or herself and that is where the family, the kith and kin comes into picture. Now, moving ahead to understand how euthanasia developed as a law in the country and over the years, what all developments we have seen with respect to euthanasia and living will. Coming to legislation so far. So, the first case that we need to understand here is the P. Ratnam case which is a pretty old case and it came in 1994. P. Ratnam case basically dealt with the question of people attempting suicide. So under IPC section 309, if a person attempts uh, to commit a suicide and for some reason the person survives, he or she would be penalized back then. Remember, this is not a law anymore. This is not a penal action anymore, but this is a situation where we are talking about 1994. Back then, Supreme Court said that if a person is about to end his or her life and you wanted to punish that person that was absolutely inconsistent with the fundamental rights and therefore they went on saying that right to life includes right to die. That means even if you choose to die, the life that you have is not something completely yours. It is something that to be decided by the constitution, that to be decided by the law that is something which comes within the purview of Article 21 of the Constitution. Now, just after two, day, uh, two years of this particular case, in Gyankor versus State of Punjab in 1996, the Supreme Court turned down the findings of P. Ratnam case and decided that right to life does not include right to die. 
simply meaning that article 21 of the constitution ensures that you have right to life with dignity but that does not mean that the law will allow you to to choose life uh, to choose death over life so right to life does not include right to die was the judgment in 1996 moving ahead the most important case was aruna shanbagh's case in the case, in the year 2011 Now, before I go ahead and tell you the story of Arun Shanbagh, let me also tell you a important concept known as living will. What is living will? So this will take you back to the first discussion that we had in this particular session. That was choosing uh, to end one's life in uh, in passive manner or in active manner, as well as voluntarily or involuntary. So coming to that voluntarily part, living will comes into picture at this particular time. living will is nothing but it's a document where while i am in best of my health in my sound mind i file or basically i set a plea saying that if at all ever in future i go through any medical condition any accident anything which forbids me to live my life in a normal manner where might be a situation that i turn into a uh, into vegetative state if at all that happens then my kith and kin do not have to rely on medical practices do not have to rely on any other thing they can completely rely on the living will that i have signed and they can go ahead and let me die in peace that is let me leave this world in a peaceful manner and not go through the suffering so seedhi seedhi baat hai ki agar kisi ne living will sign kar rakha hai and if the person reaches in a vegetative state in that case the medical board the medical practitioner can refer to the living will and accordingly let person die in peace let person be a part of passive euthanasia so coming to the point ki ye pura passive active ka proper jo discussion hai wo shuru kahan se hua it started with aruna shanbagh's case so aruna shanbagh case was a very uh, kind of a difficult very disturbing case because uh, she went through a sexual assault and because of that she went into coma So the story started in such a manner that she was a nurse in KM Hospital in Mumbai. While she was on duty, she was sexually abused by one of the office wards, one of the hospital wards in the hospital premises. And because of that incident and uh, the, the entire uh, accident that happened with her, she went into coma and later it turned into a vegetative state. Now, because of this entire situation, her family did not support her much and this entire incident happening within the premises of the hospital the hospital took the decision to nurse her to care for her till she survives or whatever her, the future follows now she has been in a vegetative state for good 36 years till this case came to supreme court there have been plea before as well but because india uh, as a country did not legalize did not recognize euthanasia there was no core recourse that was given to her so back in 2010 when a petition was filed by an ngo called common cause and a journalist named pinky virani the entire situation the difficult situation of aruna was brought in front of supreme court telling them how difficult her situation is how pathetic her condition has been going on because she has been lying on the same bed for years now it's been 36 years of being bedridden uh, without having general functionality in the body been fed through tubes been excreted through th th through tubes and the entire life revolving in one small room of the hospital for good 36 years while going through the entire case while uh, supreme court wanted to give relief to aruna shanbagh but also setting a precedent in such a manner that any kind of decision given by supreme court should not have acted in such a manner that uh, it is causing more problems in the society doing uh, rather than doing any good so when the entire case decision came the first thing that supreme court acknowledged was the concept of passive euthanasia supreme court said that we cannot allow active uh, active euthanasia in the country for the reason that one it will be misused not by just the people who have lost the will to live uh, but also by the kith and kin the family who would want the person to be dead so that you know the property can be extracted or for any other reason and for all such reasons supreme court wanted the society to be secured enough 
but in the same manner at the same time provide some sort of relief to the people or to any person who would be in a vegetative state therefore supreme court allowed passive euthanasia now when supreme court allowed passive euthanasia supreme court came up with certain set of guidelines for example if a person a who is in a vegetative state in let's say abc hospital and people the family wants to go ahead and proceed with passive euthanasia the guideline to follow would be that a hospital would constitute a medical board if the medical board examines the patient and tells or finally approves that there is no scope of development there is no scope of uh, the person you know becoming normal and allows euthanasia the same will have to be rectified at the district level the district level will again form a medical board and they have to approve the same thing until it reaches high court where a high court will finally allow passive euthanasia now the point was this entire process was so rigorous was so difficult that hardly anybody could reach there in fact that same happened with aruna's case as well when the decision came the entire procedure was so long that till the procedure could be executed aruna lost her life due to pneumonia in 2015 now coming to the point that you came up with a rule which cannot be executed which is so difficult which is so uh, rigid that uh, it it just gets lost somewhere in the paperwork at different level so to ease that while this entire discussion was going on there came another case of common cause so the another important case with respect to euthanasia and living will is common cause versus union of india a 2018 judgment where for the first time supreme court acknowledged the concept of living will living will that i have just explained you minutes ago that a document where i tell the government that if at all something goes wrong with me you can go ahead and let me die in peace but with living will there were another problem that the entire procedure faced in fact till uh, since 2018 till 2023 the procedure was so rigorous so rigid that the studies that have happened in the last few years we realize that very few very hardly any case have come up where people would have uh, gone and filed uh, or basically had their own living will or people who have family members in a vegetative state went ahead for with passive euthanasia so to ease that the majority uh, guidelines that were framed in 2018 were revised again and these guidelines were released in 2023 by the supreme court so as you see on the screen the certain guidelines which were earlier framed as compared to the revised guidelines at the moment the first problem that initially we faced was that every living will signed by a person was to be rectified was to be attested by the judicial magistrate now imagine i am signing a living will but then that makes me go ahead to judicial authorities get it attested because until then it will not be considered as a, a proper will it will not be considered for a proper decision making document so to uh, basically is that down they have decided that if i am writing a living will for myself and if i get it notarized or signed by a gazetted officer which is like very easy because we generally have some or the other person in our family friends or a social group who's a gazetted officer to sign that it would be enough and it would be sufficient the next problem was that the living will that people would sign was to be kept in the custody of the district uh, court or district hospital or at a district level depository now the point was that if i am uh, i am in a vicinity of a particular district where i have signed my will and uh, that will is kept in district a but in next few years i move to places i am in a different state i am in a different district and then something goes wrong with me and that particular living will has to be executed the new district or the new area the territory that i am they might not be even aware of so the best is to put it as a part of national repository and therefore the new rules the new guidelines says that no more keeping it in a district repository in fact put it as a national depository managed by the health department the other problem was the practitioners who would form a medical board so initially 
uh, back in 2018 when uh, Supreme Court came with the guidelines, they said that uh, the medical board should be constituted of uh, practitioners from different areas. They should have at least 20 years of experience and after their approval, the things will proceed. That again is being eased down to having just three medical practitioner with five years plus experience. The other guidelines include the rigorous procedure of one getting the approval from the hospital level, then taking it to the district level and finally getting it approved at the high court level. But no more of doing this. The court simply in 2023 said that once the primary board of medical practitioners approve it, the hospital is free to form a secondary board to get a secondary opinion. So no going to the district level, no going to the high court level, no visiting different authorities uh, demanding them, requesting them to form a medical board, then examine and then approve. The hospital would take the sole responsibility of this. The other important factor was, what if I find uh, I I found a medical board who's going to help me with with the you know living well situation or a passive euthanasia situation, but they are just taking forever to answer that. So is there a time limit to withdraw the further medical assistance? Earlier there was no such time limit kept. But now that time limit has been set to 48 hours. And the last that they have uh, modified as a part of rules and regulation was that in case, back in 2018 rules, in case if the medical board rejects the plea of allowing passive euthanasia or going through, uh, you know, executing the living will, the kith and kin will have no recourse because if medical board rejects, then nothing can or nobody can help you. But now if the medical board rejects, the kith and kin, the family members can directly approach the high court and high court can find uh, its own medical board and that medical board can assist the family. So these are the set of rules which not only help the family members uh, go ahead and execute the procedure but also helps a person end his or her suffering because that's the most difficult and crucial part which majority of the people don't understand. With these rules, we expect that uh, we would be having a better uh, right to life and not just right to life, but right to dignity, where a person who is going through enormous amount of sufferings can go ahead and rest in peace rather than going ahead and suffering and every day dying more than uh, living in a general manner. So these were the rules. These were the changes in the guidelines that I wanted to discuss with you before uh, we go ahead and end this session. There is another important information that I want to give you that we are going through the CLAT Challenger series 2024 and the next mock test is scheduled on 13th of August. Yes, it's scheduled on 13th of August. If you have not registered for the first mock test, it's no, not a problem. It's an all India open mock test. You can register for the second mock itself. Why register for this mock and appear for this mock test? Because or as always, uh, this is going to help you benchmark your performance for CLAD 2024. Will also help you with your performance analytics and analysis. And along with that, you get a chance to win cash prize up to 8 lakh rupees. Yes, you have the option and opportunity to win prizes up to 8 lakh rupees. So go ahead and register yourself. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.